Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got three stories. First up, we're actually going to do a follow-up from the video from yesterday because the law firm that is bringing this class action lawsuit against Google, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook actually reached out to me yesterday after watching the video also. Ripple sued YouTube a couple of months ago, and the response that was given from the YouTube lawyers is pretty much this. Hey, I know they're scams, but we're not liable for those scams. Also, the Ethereum 2.0 testnet is on the way, and it looks like it's actually going to launch in two weeks, so everything is actually on schedule. So I'm going to give a tip of my hat to the Ethereum team. Congratulations, looks like we're going in the right direction. And finally, we'll go over Scam of the Day at the very end, but we'll take a look at that after all the stories, so let's jump right in. So first up, it is July 22nd. It is roughly 2 o'clock Texas time, and it looks like the market really isn't doing too much. Uh, Bitcoin holding strong at almost 9,400, so I'm pretty happy about that. No big dips, fantastic. Ethereum's ah, it's pretty much the same, 245. Heather's Tether, XRP, broke into 20 cents. Watch out. Bitcoin Cash, sure. Cardano down a little bit. Uh, looks like Chainlink's up a little bit more. And uh, they were doing a massive run, but uh, hey, you can't go up forever, right? Crypto.com breaking are still in the top 10. Binance coin, everything else is good. Nothing too majorly uh, massive, but uh, I'm just happy everything is holding steady. And I got to tell you, I think there's something coming up, the, up on the horizon. Just don't know exactly what it is, but I see big things. All right, let's break into the big story of the day. So big story of the day, at least for this channel, was that uh, we had talked yesterday. There is a lawsuit being brought forth. Um, it is a class action lawsuit, and they are essentially suing Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube uh, because of the advertising ban that they put on cryptocurrency and digital assets in 2018. If you're not aware, um, you will only see uh, advertisements on these platforms if they are a regulated exchange. You won't see anything for ICOs, you won't see anything for hardware wallets, you won't see anything that has to do with anything outside of exchanges because that is the only thing that is actually allowed. And what this law firm is saying is, look, because you made that decision, you did not allow uh, cryptocurrencies and digital assets to actually advertise in your platform and you took this opportunity away and it wiped out a lot of businesses. And I can tell you, after I posted this story, I received a couple, uh, actually numerous, uh, stories about people who had gotten into the cryptocurrency uh, market, not just to be investors, but to do other types of things. Somebody told me about uh, a hardware wallet. Somebody told me about um, being a, a consultant. And there's also different things for different products. And they say, you know what? Within like uh, you know a couple of weeks, our business model just wiped off the face of the earth because you can only do so much with word of mouth. I mean, really, you know, 70, 80 percent of what you're going to do for advertising is all on these platforms. And I can tell you, I mean, I do the same thing for my businesses. And if I, if, if I was delisted or not able to actually advertise on these uh, platforms, uh, my business would go away. So it is one of those things where like you have to really be uh, on top of these things or else it all just kind of uh, slips away. So this is what is going on. So we talked about that at length. And what was interesting was yesterday, uh, late last night, I got an email and uh, it said, hey, thanks so much. You kicked off your show with our lawsuit, which I was like, what? Who? What? And uh, apparently this was from Dr. Brian Bishko, VP Technology and Public Affairs for JPB Liberty uh, Party Limited, which is a law firm that is bringing forth this lawsuit. And he said, you know, basically, it was like, we'd like to talk to you, see what you had a problem with. We're going to open up our class action lawsuit for YouTubers, bloggers, news sites, and uh, different people that have actually held uh, cryptocurrency from 2018 moving on. And uh, they're, they said he's working very hard, and, uh, you know, there we go. So I was kind of, I wrote him back, and I said, you know, I will love to talk to him, uh, see what he has to say. But the big thing was I took a look at their actual website and I'll link it in the uh, description or the uh, yeah description of the video. And uh, you, I mean, I don't know if you would uh, do this, but uh, there's a little button here that says join the class action and there's going to be a video to watch. There is an anonymous, uh, you sign up anonymously. Uh, there's nothing that they want from you. They don't want any type of uh, money. Uh, if uh, they win, then you know class action lawsuits are class action lawsuits. But I got to tell you, uh, in the video yesterday, I had to say that I think this is going to be uh, a very big 
uh, thing moving forward because this is just one lawsuit right now. We're going to talk about the Ripple versus YouTube lawsuit. And there's other things coming on the pipe. I don't see this as, as being the only one, especially moving forward, especially what's going to happen in this space. Um, I think, I mean, I see only only great things from cryptocurrency digital assets. And uh, if, you know, you have these types of uh, formats who don't want to play ball, it's going to get really dicey. It's going to get real dicey real fast, and uh, we'll see how it all goes. But, uh, yeah, um, let's break into uh, the next article. So next up, ah, okay, wait, was I got to tell you, the uh, YouTube amazingly they uh, they gave a response uh, in the in court, and they said pretty much, hey, we're not responsible. So it's uh, we're not liable for crypto scammers actions, says YouTube on XRP giveaway scams, and this is not just XRP giveaway. This is all scams. They're saying like, hey. We're not responsible. We're just a uh, platform, so no big deal. And I'm going to tell you why uh, in a little bit why I think that's uh, not going to hold water. So YouTube's representative attorneys, plural, have responded to Ripple's lawsuit by saying that YouTube is not liable to the actions of third-party content creators on the platform. And before I move on, um, we have to keep an open mind here. The legal system is there as checks and balances. So if there is something to be said here or something that can be hashed out, this is what it what it all is. Now I have my my biases. I think maybe you might have your biases about about YouTube, or all the scams and whatnot, but you know, maybe if we take a step back and look at it, that's why the court system is here in play to actually hear both sides of the argument. So uh, we will see what happens. Anyhow, Ripple's lawsuit argued that YouTube benefits from ad traffic from such scammers and by failing to take action against them the platform is complicit however according to youtube's response the platform has dismissed ripple's claims by quoting section 230 of the communication decency act protection for private blocking and screening of offensive material acts so if you're not familiar a couple months ago uh, ripple got pretty ticked off because they kept seeing their ceo brad garlinghouse and a lot of these different scams and it was being pushed through and it wasn't so much as like the it, the thing wasn't that it was just some random video that somebody put out uh it was actually being advertised and we've seen advertised all i mean different scams all over the place i mean just like one like this and i have actually done a separate video i was gonna release it last night but i got late i got so many things going on but uh, i'll release this again but um these ads that keep popping up i'm going to show you how to like this is on crazy i was watching crazy for cryptos and this ad popped up i had to record it uh, I'm going to show you how to downvote and report it without downvoting uh, your favorite YouTuber uh, by actually going to uh, this scammer's account, going into the video, and actually reporting the video. I'm going to show you how to do that uh, today later on. There's one thing to be said uh, just to have a random YouTube person trying to uh, perpetrate a scam. The other thing on the on the flip side of that is somebody who actually is able to get into Google AdWords, sign up for an account, go through the whole vetting process, go through the video and have somebody review it, whether that be an actual live person, usually it's not, uh, or some kind of artificial intelligence or AI type of uh, learning platform that uh, Google and YouTube use to, or Google AdWords uses, to actually push this video out and then to profit from it. So, I mean, you have to remember, um, it's not just like these scammers are profiting from it. Uh, it is actually YouTube as well. So um, if they're going to if they're gonna say, hey, we're not responsible for it, don't know if that's going to hold water. But again, that is uh, up to the legal system. I am not a lawyer, but it uh, just doesn't seem right to me. Anyhow, moving on. YouTube's attorneys further argue that it would be unrealistic for YouTube to verify all the content coming in for publishing since it doesn't change the fact that it is from third-party providers. And I got to agree. I mean, there's no way that they can uh, look at every single video that comes through. However, you have to remember, uh, people can upload all day long. But when you go through the whole process of actually advertising, uh, that is a much uh, less percentage of videos that is actually being looked at. So if you had, you know, millions of videos per day being uploaded, you have a fraction of that that are people actually trying to monetize and actually, uh, you know, get in as far as advertising. So uh, I think they could do a better job. But what do I know? I, I don't work for, for Google. Anyhow, moving down. And this was the interesting part. It says here, YouTube's spam deceptive practices and scams policies guidelines for its users directly states YouTube doesn't allow spam scams or other deceptive practices that take advantage of the YouTube community. Let me read that again. 
YouTube does not allow spam, scams, or other deceptive practices that take advantage of the YouTube community. So remember, uh, as far as like legal terms, you have to take a look at it. You know, there's always like these layers of onions. Uh, believe me, someone who actually had to go through litigation process because uh, I was sued uh, before. And um, I can tell you that there are different many layers that these lawyers will use to actually look through, through everything. Now, you, and again, even if you win a lawsuit, you will still lose a lawsuit because you have to put up so much money. So Ripple is spending a ton of money. Uh, Google and YouTube are spending a ton of money, but uh, that's just how the whole process works. But I got to tell you, um, if YouTube here says that, hey, we don't allow the spams or scams, meaning that, okay, this is what we say we're going to do. We don't allow that. Well, if it sneaks through, we make money from it. Well, hey, that's just one of those things that uh, we can't control that because whatever. So... If you take a look at that policy, uh, plus this new policy from YouTube's lawyers, which is like, hey, we're not responsible for it. So, you know, if it happens, it happens. Uh, it states here, the new development, which we just talked about, might communicate the wrong idea to scammers and impersonators who move to exploit the lack of liability on YouTube's part. And I said here, well, yeah, scammers then can scam all day long and they have no repercussions. That's a pretty sweet deal, right? I mean, if you try to rob a bank and they're like, hey, stop robbing this bank and you know, maybe go down to the street to the other bank. Okay, I'll do that. And you go down and it's, it, that's, like, that's like the same thing. So it's like, well, if there's no repercussions for it, I'll just keep doing it until someone says I can't and I'll just do it again and until something happens and nothing's gonna happen, well, who cares? So uh, that's the whole thing about that. And we'll go into a scam of the day later, but uh, let's move on to our next article. Next up, and I think this is huge, much anticipated Ethereum 2.0, Final test net will launch in two weeks. I have always said, uh, I've always been disappointed in, in Ethereum's ability to meet uh, different criteria and their goals, but it looks like they're actually doing a good job. So tip of the hat. Anyhow, Ethereum 2.0 developer and researcher Danny Ryan said on Discord that the test net will go live on August 4th if everything goes according to plan. The test net will then need several months of extensive testing before launching Ethereum 2.0 main net, which will most likely occur after three months, sometime around November 4th. The news comes shortly after Ethereum developers led by Ryan conducted an extensive incentivized hacking exercise called the TAC Nets to test the limits of the current running test net. And the launch will mark the final public test net, the much awaited Ethereum migration from proof of work to proof of stake. It's also a major milestone in solving Ethereum's current scaling limitations and implementing sharding, essentially upgrading its blockchain for more superior DeFi experience. And I got to tell you, uh, DeFi is just exploding everywhere. And there are different uh, coins out there, um, Compound being the one of them. There's another report that talks about DeFi. Uh, and these are like coins like way down uh, uh, in, the, in the top 100. They're actually doing very well. But you have to remember one thing uh, about DeFi. Uh, DeFi, Ethereum, things are being built massively on Ethereum. That's why I am a big proponent of Ethereum. And the other thing about, about DeFi, and you have to remember, and this was an article. I'm just going to jump real quick. Uh, this was from uh, the CoinStats blog. And it talks about the DeFi runs ahead of Bitcoin, stocks, gold, and others. And it talks about how great DeFi is and different coins and everything is great. But you have to remember one thing. And that is that this, there is a little project I like to talk about all the time, and it's called Chainlink. And Chainlink, a decentralized Oracle network, uh, didn't enjoy much attention at the beginning of this year, but the project came on its own as it kept on signing lucrative deals with other DeFi projects. The task is straightforward. Feed public blockchains with off-chain data from markets, events, and payments through a decentralized network. So don't you understand that um, with this whole DeFi craze going about, there is one thing that every DeFi needs. It's an Oracle to pull this external data because blockchain can't pull external data via API, but Chainlink can. And that's why I think Chainlink is going to be so huge. It's just like the gold rush in the early 1900s. The people that made the most amount of money was the people that actually supplied or gave the supplies to all the different uh, prospectors, the people that were actually there to look for gold. Those people didn't make the money. All the all the, the people that set up shop and go, hey, here's a pan, here's a pickaxe, here's a shovel, here's a blah, blah, blah. Those are the ones that made all the money because there was just too many people out there that were trying to hit their gold. I think chain, I see Chainlink as, a, as the same thing. You need Chainlink for everything as far as DeFi to pull this, this different data in. So just go with, with uh, Chainlink. Anyhow, that's what I'm not saying for what you to do. That's what I am doing. 
course. Anyhow, let's jump back to that first article. Anyhow, moving on, moving on. As the second most popular crypto and largest dApps development platform, the move will likely skyrocket Ethereum's price in the coming weeks amidst the ongoing altcoin season. I got to tell you, I can only see uh, big things for Ethereum. Uh, it just only makes sense to me. Ethereum has so far launched three test nets for phase zero of the ETH 2.0 roadmap. The first testnet launched in late April with two clients, Prism and Lighthouse. Second testnet, Shalizi, launched in early May to lay the foundation for Ethereum 2.0's beacon chain. The third testnet, Altona, went live on June 30th with four different clients, each with two nodes, and they've all been successful. The success of Altona, which is running with specifications of the Ethereum's 2.0's mainnet, will pave way for the upcoming fourth and final launch of the testnets before the launch of Phase Zero. So, if all that is new to you and you're kind of like, what the heck is going on? I'm going to link in the description. And we did a video on this probably about three weeks ago. And it just went over the Ethereum 2.0, what it was going to happen, the whole uh, roadmap and the timeline and everything else. But uh, I'll link that at the end, but I'm also going to put this in the description. This is from Consensus. Uh, and it, it talks about everything as far as like, you know, the roadmap, the timeline, the time frame, what uh, the uh, proof of stake is, how many Ethereum you need, hint, hint, it's 32, and then how that all works and uh, what you have to do with your Ethereum uh, that you have now to switch it over. And actually, I'll just tell you, you don't have to do anything. It's pretty simple. But uh, if you want to uh, stake it, it's a little bit more uh, complex. So I'll link that in the description. But uh, again, I got to tell you, I was always critical about Ethereum, also Cardano as well, uh, because they could never hit their timelines. It always uh, made, me, made me nuts. But uh, I got to tell you, when you're doing something this complex and this drastic, I think it is... You know, you have to take your time and you have to make sure that things work. And I always say, it's like when I'm when I'm up in an airplane. Uh, I don't want Boeing to cut corners and, uh, you know, kind of like go, well, let's just throw something at the wall, hope it works. And, uh, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, maybe an engine fails, who knows? And I drop out of the sky. Uh, I think it's the same thing here. You're like, hey, we got to be a little bit more meticulous. want to make sure because we're going to do something enormous that's going to change the world. All right, I'll give you a pass. <laughs> maybe it's going to take a little bit longer. And that's fine. Moving down, we'll finish up. The successful launch of Phase Zero, the beacon chain, could benefit Ethereum's position in the DeFi space. First, the booming activity of DeFi, most of which occurs on Ethereum's blockchain, is pushing its scalability almost to a breaking point, and this is why they have to upgrade everything. And uh, this is why I've also invested in Tezos and Cardano, because um, Ethereum could do great. But then again, maybe it couldn't. So we need some kind of smart contract, some type of thing that, that DeFi can be built upon. And I like the other two projects as well. EOS, I mean, sure, maybe, I guess. Uh, somebody actually uh, in, the, in the comment section said, why did you invest in EOS? Because it was very promising. And uh, these days, not so much. So, uh, But that's why I'm big on Ethereum, Cardano, Tezos, and Chainlink. And um, I got to tell you, I think it's all going to work out. Which leads to the last point. Uh, major competitors like Cardano and Tezos are making headway with key milestones that are ready to give Ethereum a run for its money. And this is what why competition is fantastic, uh, because it pushes everybody to do greater things than they could by themselves. Now, some people will say, uh, we don't even pay attention to our competition. And I got to tell you, uh, they're full of it, because everybody is is looking around going, what's going on? I mean, not that they're really, really looking like a deep dive, but even me, like I don't really look at my competition, uh, but I do have some of my peripheral vision, and I will say, well, I should really, you know, pick up the pace here and do these things so competition is good i think that's what is going to push ethereum to even greater heights um so that's why i invest in these types of things and also i mean as far as like DeFi, DeFi is great but uh, i'm buying all these things up and then i'm doing a one-two punch what i do is i buy uh these cryptocurrency digital assets uh, on Voyager. And what we're looking at here, sorry, is uh, my exchange and uh, wallet fees and information um, spreadsheet. If you want to take a look at this, this is everything I'm using right now or have used, how I recommend it or if I don't recommend it, and then all the different data points that you actually need, like uh, you know how much it actually costs and the fees and the staking and the funding, how it all works out. Uh, if you want to take a look at that, it's in the description of every one of my videos. It looks exactly like this. And when you click on that, it'll go over everything from Coinbase, which I do not recommend, only for uh, an off-ramp or unless you're super new. Um, uh, Gemini, Gemini Pro, uh, Binance, Kraken, and then eToro. Totally don't recommend them at all. Um, 
But my t my favorite one two punch right now is Voyager to buy because um, just like Robin Hood, just like Robin Hood, the the uh, trading app or the yeah trading app, there's no fees, so I like that part a lot, and uh, it's super easy to use. I think my mom could use it, which is amazing because she's not really good with technology. Uh, but everything else is just fantastic. So Voyager is great. And what I do is I buy it with Voyager and I transfer it over to Celsius because what I like about Celsius is that, first of all, I like the CEO, Alex Mashinsky. That guy is dynamic. I got to do more things about uh, just to feature that guy. And um, what you'll notice here is that you can just by storing your cryptocurrency on Celsius, and I don't store, I, I don't store all of it. Let's just be honest. I'm not going to store all my cryptocurrency in one wallet is just uh, ridiculous uh, especially uh you know like a, a, a hot wallet i would i store the majority of them in my ledger but when i want to make interest i will transfer it over and like for bitcoin and remember you don't have to have a minimum for celsius it's just whatever you have in there and they pay it out weekly yeah it's weekly which is pretty great right so you got bitcoin uh at four percent and then Voyager does the same thing, but not as much. So, I mean, I, I have things in my Voyager wall. I just kind of sometimes it slips my mind. And I'll still get, um, you know, interest paid on that, but not as much as Celsius. So I'm always trying to transfer over to Celsius to make the most. So Ethereum 3.8, Ethereum Classic 6%. Uh, USDT 8.69, and you can just see all these different, uh, you know, uh, Tether 8.69, 6.18 for Dash. I mean, it's just, uh, it's amazing. So, but what Celsius does is it's not like, it's not like farming, um, uh, you know, yield farming, all that stuff, which I don't really believe in because it doesn't really, you know, create anything. With Celsius, what they do is you put the cryptocurrency up, they loan it out to institutions, and then that actually makes money. And that is how it all works. And Alex Mashinsky, the CEO, is the same gentleman who created Voice Over Internet Protocol for the internet before the internet was actually the internet. So um, I believe in that guy he makes a lot of sense so you want to take a look at that go ahead there's a sign up there's an affiliate link you get 25 dollars if you sign up for voyager celsius actually yeah, everything um but you don't have to use my links if you don't want to just go to the website and uh sign up that way but you just miss out on the on the uh, bonus but that's up to you whatever you want to do and uh that is it for today's video now if you got a couple minutes uh stick with me we're just gonna go over a scam of the day and try to clean up our community uh but if you got things to do just drop off and uh, that's that's all. So let's jump into uh, Scam of the Day, shall we? So Scam of the Day. Oh, I love this thing. I love it because I'm so sick of people getting screwed out of their money. And I created this back in January because of people telling me they were getting you know, taken and I just uh, couldn't stand it. So what we have here is you can find the Scam of the Day in the description of every one of my videos. Uh, the link looks just like this. And what we'll do is we'll just scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. These all, we, all, all these ones have been taken care of. So there's a date found, date removed. We've done a pretty good job. Uh, there's there's still some ones left over. So let's see if they're actually still there. Hopefully they're not, but who knows? Let's see. So we're going to click on the last one. And of course it's still here. Unbelievable. So I know YouTube says that they are not responsible for these scams, but if we're telling you that it's a scam and people are going to screw their money, what else do you need? Because you can totally see it when you first get here. It says, if you send 50,000 bet, you'll receive 100,000 bet back. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. So why is this still up? It drives me bonkers. Anyhow, I will calm down. Let me go down a little bit. And uh, here's how, first of all, don't take my word for it. I could just be a liar and just want you to uh, attack the VeChain Foundation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the comments section. Okay, what's going on here? First of all, live in Spanish, all right? I don't understand what this video is. It's very interesting for Kevin. I don't know. Cable. <laughs> but uh, so if you don't speak Spanish, it's fine. But uh, just if the English part here, hackers. Uh, okay, so there's something going on with this. We don't really know what. All you got to do is really just look up here. This is called an asymmetrical giveaway. I want to just tell you that treat everything like a scam until proven otherwise and your life will be a lot easier. So with this one, um, no one's giving you free VeChain. No one's giving you free Bitcoin. No one's giving you free XRP. No one's giving you free money. 
It just doesn't work like that. You're not that special. I mean, maybe you are, I don't know, but no, I, no one's gonna give you free money. Uh, so the thing is, is that when we see this, we're like, okay, we have two options here. We can just assume that this is a scam, hint, hint it is, or if you don't wanna listen to me, which is fine, do your own research, go to uh, the official website of VeChan and go, hey, uh, I saw this website or this, this YouTube video. It looks like you guys are giving away money. Are you giving away free VeChain? And just email them. Uh, give it about 24 hours, they'll get back to you, and they will say no. Same thing with um, Ripple or with XRP. Just go to the Ripple website. Hey, you guys give me free XRP? No. Hey, Binance, you give away Binance coin? No. Hey, uh, I just saw that Elon Musk uh, is going to give away free Bitcoin, so I, I'm emailing Tesla. No, we're not doing that. It's the same thing. So if you don't believe me, just reach out to the official website and they'll tell you it's a scam. So what do we do? So what we do pretty simply is we're going to downvote, which I've already done like three times. And we're going to click on these three dots and we're going to click on report. And we're going to say, what is this? Well, it's spam misleading and it is a scam or a fraud. We're gonna click on next and we're gonna say, hey, this is a scam and report. And that's it. So real quick, I wanna go over one thing and I'm gonna talk about this later today too. But just so you know, you might've seen a scam video before this video started. You might've seen a scam video in the middle and you might see a scam advertisement video at the end. But I will just say this, I did a, uh, a poll where I asked uh, who decides which ads are placed on each YouTube. And out of the 400 plus votes, 78% uh, of you said YouTube only, which is true. I have no um, power to choose what ads are placed on my channel. I wish I, I, wish I could, because I would choose a lot better ads. But um, uh, some people said, well, it's the YouTube channel who created the video, or it's uh, a combination of YouTube and uh, the creators. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, it's like 21%. That's like one out of five people believe that this channel or me could be responsible for putting scam ads. So just so you know, I have no uh, authority or power to put ads on my channel. It's just all up to YouTube who really takes no responsibility, but that's just how it is. All right, so again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.